determination of the solubility product constant. In today's experiment, we're going to be dealing with the production of a solid lead iodide. We will remember that the solubility product constant, or KSP, is determined by taking the concentrations, and in our case, of Pb2+, multiplied by the concentration of I-. Remember that in the balanced equation, the coefficient of I- is 2. Therefore, when in the solubility product constant equation, or the KSP equation, we have to square it. So the KSP becomes Pb2 plus multiplied by I minus squared. We'll begin by taking potassium iodide and lead nitrate. Remember, the net equation here, we're after the I minus and the lead, the Pb2 plus. When we mix the two solutions, we will determine if a solid is formed or not. The solid, remember, we call a precipitate. We will do that for six test tubes, and each of the one determining if a precipitate is formed or not. By doing this, we're going to find the approximate KSP of lead iodide. Now, if you look at your table of solubilities, you'll notice there is a KSP for lead iodide. What we're going to do is we're going to experimentally find the KSP, or the approximate KSP for lead iodide. So we'll take the first two, where we have 10 mils of potassium iodide and 10 mils of lead nitrate. We mix the two solutions together. Notice we get a yellow color, and it's very milky, so we notice a precipitate has formed. Sometimes it's difficult to see whether or not a precipitate's formed, but generally you'll notice that it goes a milky color, and if we stir it around, we see the precipitate forming on the side. Let's just put that aside. So a precipitate did form. And remember that I will, at the end of the lab, post the results in a table. The next two solutions are diluted. We also see a reaction. We notice the yellow color, and there's also a precipitate formed. The third test tubes are further diluted. Six mils of potassium iodide, six mils of lead nitrate, diluted to 10 mils of water. Remember, we're varying the concentrations to see whether a precipitate were formed. In essence, we're doing the trial KSP. If you've done some reading, the trial KSP, if it's larger than the KSP, a precipitate will form. If it's smaller than the KSP, a precipitate won't form. When we vary the concentrations, what we'll do is we'll find out the approximate concentrations at which the KSP does and doesn't form, and our KSP value for the lead iodide will fall in between. We'll move on to the fourth set of test tubes. Their concentrations are 4 mils of each solution diluted to 10 mils of water. What we'll do is we'll mix it. Give it a moment and we notice a precipitate has also formed. So far, the first 
four mixed solutions have formed precipitates. We'll do the fifth set of test tubes. Remember, the concentrations of iodine and lead have been reduced. When we mix the two together, give it some time, we notice that there is no precipitate formed. And lastly, We mix the last two test tubes, stir. We see also that no precipitate has formed. If we take a look at the fourth mixture and the fifth set of test tubes that we mixed, we see a precipitate here and we don't see a precipitate here. So somewhere in between these two concentrations lies the true value of KSP. What we will determine is we'll determine the trial KSP for this test tube, the trial KSP for this test tube using the results from our data table that I will post later, and we will find the area which is somewhere in between where the value of KSP for lead iodide is. Now in the second half of the lab, what we do is we graph and we're trying to explore and find out what happens to the KSP as temperature rises. What do we notice or is there a relationship between the solubility product constant, the solubilities of ions as temperature is increased? What we do is we take the four test tubes where the solid has formed, we place them into a bath of water, and as the temperature increases, we see when the precipitate disappears. This will all be written in a data table. Now, just to save some time, we're not going to go through the whole process, but what I will do as I'll pop up a data table for you that you can use when you answer your questions. And you'll also need it for the conclusion. We just got a little bit too much water here. Let's just get rid of some of the water. We'll just place it into our Erlenmeyer flask. Place our beakers. And we're good to go. This process generally takes somewhere between zero to five minutes, maybe more. But just remember, using the data tables that I'll provide, I would like you to find the KSP value for lead iodide. And secondly, I would like you to graph the value of the KSPs that you found using the concentrations that you made up with the temperature at which the KSP disappears.